Today we're going to be going over the basics of environmental management with Conda. Um, so the real question is, why do you need virtual environments? Um, and really the real question is, what is a virtual environment? The best way to explain this is, say you have uh, multiple projects and they all rely on a library. Um, since I am a data scientist, I typically have uh, pandas, numpy, etc. in my Python environment. Um, and let's say one of my old projects relies on the older version of pandas, and some of those commands have been depreciated, i.e. they don't exist in my current version of pandas. Um, I don't want that project to, to break down, but I want to do new projects with the, the new enhanced features of pandas or numpy or whatever. So the way to get around this is set up the virtual environments. It allows you to separate out packages, dependencies, versions, as you're going um, from project to project. And I guess I'm reading off a little blog post I'll include below. Um, and a really common use case of uh, virtual environments um, or conda environments is if you want separate um, Python 2 and 3 environments. So a, the reason why I'm making this video um, in reality is because a couple of my classmates at UC San Diego where I go to school, um, they have a machine learning class where um, the professor wants them to use Python 3, but they have a lot of projects in Python 2 that they still want to be able to, to use, upgrade, and, and keep working, right? Um, in their, you know, and they want to be able to switch between Python 2 and 3 in their different classes because sometimes professors want Python 2, sometimes they want Python 3. Okay, so I'm going to go over how you would solve this conundrum using virtual environments. So I'm going to open up a terminal. I should mention that this is going to require Anaconda. And if you don't have Anaconda, I'll leave a link below uh, to my GitHub where it has links to different blog posts um, and YouTube videos on how to install Anaconda. Um, and I have a wonderful GitHub that goes over installations um, for just about everything. Uh, Anaconda, AWS, uh, RStudio, Spark, TensorFlow, and you can even contribute to this repo on GitHub. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do um, to go over virtual environments is I want to show you that right now I'm using um, Python 2. Okay, so you can see I'm using Python 2.7. Um, and I want to be able to use um, Python 3. Okay. So if I just open up um, Python right now, um, just in my terminal, um, a good way to, to show that I'm in Python 2 is to do something in Python 2 that wouldn't be allowed in Python 3. So if I do print hi, it's going to work, okay? Um, because I'm in Python 2. Um, but I'll show you um, how to set up a Python 3 environment. So what we'll do is uh, conda create um, name of a virtual environment. So I'm going to call it pi36, um, and that stands for Python 3.6. You have to have something here um, basically saying the, the Python version, or anything really, just dependencies. Um, you can even include names of libraries that you want to make sure they're going to be installed. You can do pandas, you can do IPy kernel, whatever you want. And you can put a long list as long as you space them out. Okay? So the name of the environment I am creating is, is Py36, and I want Python 3.6. Okay? So it sometimes takes a second. Um, you have to install some stuff. Okay? Um, so I created a um, new environment. And to get in there, you just do um, source activate the name of the environment. In my case, it was Py36. And now I'm in uh, Py36, as you can tell. It's a, it's a Python 3.6 environment. Okay, so I'm going to go into Python, um, and I'm going to try the print high thing that's not going to work right now. Okay, um, because Python 3 wants something like this. Okay. Okay. And if you want to get out of the environment, go back to Python 2. You just do source deactivate. Okay. 
One thing that I didn't go over right now um, is if I want to remove this environment, and that is just conda environment remove name of the environment and minus pi 36. Okay, and I want to remove it. Um, conda environment list. That's just showing all the environments I have, and right now I just have my basic installation of Anaconda. Um, I want to show you that uh, if I tried to make a con environment, um, let's just say I made a different environment, um, or I made the same one again, um, conda create uh, name, and then I call pi36 again. Uh, I'm just showing you that I can't um, do this with IPython, and I'll show you how to fix that. So conda create the name of the environment is Py36 again, and then Python 3.6. Um, one second. Okay. So then um, source activate Py36. And then if I try to open a Jupyter Notebook right now, I, I'll be able to open a notebook, but I won't be able to um, use that current environment that I just made. All I just have is my um, root, and I don't have what I currently just made. And that's a real shame, right? So I will show you how to fix that. So if you want to use both um, or all your environments in um, Jupyter or whatever, I'll show you how to, to get around that problem so you can go about the rest of your life and get your work done or whatever you're trying to do. Okay. I'm removing the environment because it's... Okay, oh, sorry. Um, I gotta I deactivate the environment before I remove it. Okay, deactivate. Okay, and then conda environment remove name pi36. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go over um, how to have all your conda environments in IPython notebooks, okay? Because a lot of people use IPython for various reasons. Um, for example, my classmates use it for like everything, um, which is fine. So the first thing um, we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure um, we have a couple of the package nvconda kernels and its dependencies. And the reason we're gonna do this is basically when you launch Jupyter, you want to be able to recognize you have different conda environments so we can uh, work within them. So before I do anything, I wanna make sure I have Anaconda um, 4.1 or higher. And you can tell I have a typo here, or higher, okay. So I'm gonna do conda version. I have a, a correct ver uh, a version above um, 4.1, but if you didn't, you could always do conda, update conda. Pretty simple. Um, but next thing I want to do is even if you have a, a current version of Anaconda, um, you may not necessarily have nvconda kernels, which is the package we need um, to make sure when we launch Jupyter Notebook we have access to the environments we create. So what I'll do is um, uh, actually you can do conda list to see if you have it, but assuming I don't have um, conda and or nb conda kernels, I just do conda install the name of the package. This could take a second, and then your internet speed and um, what dependencies um, you have or don't have. So it's taking my computer a second. So I already have the packages installed, but if you didn't, you'd have to install them. Okay, um, you can check if you have it installed currently. Um, by doing conda list. And I should mention I will have a link to this blog post below so you can go through step by step and so you, you know, can actually have this work. So I already have it installed after doing conda list. I can see that's there. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, new environments. And I want a, um, a Python 3.6 environment. And this is largely taken from Stack Overflow posts that I adapted um, to suit some classmates' needs. Um, also, it would be a little bit more current. So 
the next thing I'm going to do is I'll create a Python 3.6 environment. So create name of the environment, and I want, oh, name of the environment will be Py36 again. Um, I want it to have Python 3.6 because I need that for my, uh, or I need that. And then I want the package ipykernel. Okay. Okay. So with ipykernel, um, it has a couple other dependencies. Okay. So if I want to go inside this environment, I can always do source activate py36. Um, you can also, if you are coming from Python 3 and you want Python 2, you can do something similar with um, conda create, uh, the name of the environment, and then some other dependencies. What I should mention is we just installed, um, when we create this environment, and inside the, the py36 environment, we have installed a bunch of new things, okay? So the standard practice, and I'm not going to go into why in this video, is to simply um, close your terminal and open a new one. There's a couple other things you can do, like um, do source um, bash profile or source bash rc, but like I, it's not worth getting into right now. Okay, so um, before we created um, Py36 environment, so I just want to see that it's there, and you can do that with the command uh, conda and env list. So I have my uh, Py36 environment, and I um, I can go into it, and I could launch Jupyter from there, which is fine. Um, but let's just say I want to go my, about my daily business from root. Um, but if I launch Jupyter, I want access to this environment. What we can do now um, is open our Jupyter notebook. I can, one second, I can click new and I have access to that new environment we made. Um, and let's just see, print hi. And while we can print hi, um, this is pretty Python agnostic. It works in Python 2 and 3. Um, but if we do something that's um, strictly speaking Python 2, um, it's a good way to show you that we're actually in Python 3. So this is not going to work. Okay, so we're actually in Python 3, which is cool because our root is in Python 2, at least for me. Um, you can do this um, vice versa. If you had a Python 3, you can create a Python 2 environment, and you can uh, launch Jupyter that way. So I just want to mention before I close out um, that I have, I'll have the blog post going over um, Python environmental management. Um, how to set this up, um, and how to launch Jupyter Notebooks or Python Notebooks, um, and have access to all your environments. Um, as well as, I have a repo uh, on GitHub that's strictly speaking of installations. Um, if you have any like future needs where you want to uh, install Anaconda, which chances are you already have it, um, but on a different operating system, you want to learn something about AWS or RStudio or Spark, um, please feel free to look at the repo. I'll leave a link to it below as well. Um, if you want to contribute something yourself, feel free to submit a pull request. Um, and that's it. Um, please remember to subscribe. If not, that's cool too. Have a great night.